but then you're getting tricked out from these females and paying their bills also, but you're not even committed to them most of the time. I'm the bitch. Ain't no sequel. The last season, Moa Dean. Ain't no getting through them gates without that blood on you. I can tell he ordering my steps. Cause when the world said no, the father still said yes. Clearly, I'm just trying to study. And I got the Snuggie one. Okay, yes, I still own one. Okay. Anyway. Just real quick, I had to hop on. This may be... Eh, something that may not blow your mind but it blew mine and it just is what it is i'm in the apocrypha right reading first edris and the thing that sparked me was let me get to it hold on first edris has the same nature in which the book of kings have like you know how you have the and if you haven't read it yet it's basically a compilation of kings that were ruling during a long time period those that were righteous those that were wicked in god's eyes and so forth so it's in that same realm in writing but when it comes to the persian king darius these three men decided to write some wise sayings, okay, and give it to the king. Mind you, they're all in a drunken state. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Inhibitions are down. Let's do it. And whoever wins by who the wisest phrase is or whoever writes it gets to be called Darius's cousin like okay but pretty much it's just a power play on getting to sit on the right hand of Darius and getting all the perks or whatever right of kingship but the thing is one of them said <laughs> because this is first Edris chapter 3 and verse 12 and this is what sparked me to keep reading it says the third wrote and this is again First Edris chapter 3 verse 12. The third wrote, women are strongest, but above all, truth bears away the victory. Mm -hmm. This is probably unknowingly, this is where a lot of people and a lot of, this is where a lot of women think that they are indeed the strongest because there are points in here that women say today for example let me see it starts explaining the why statement that the man gave okay and this is first address chapter 4 verse 15 women matter of fact let me jump up to 14 O ye men, is it not the great king, nor the multitude of men, neither is it wine that excelleth? Who is it then that ruleth them, or hath the lordship over them? Are they not women? 15. Women have borne the king, and all the people that bear rule by sea and land, even of them, Come they, and they nourish them up that plan the vineyards from whence the wine cameth. These also have made garments for men. These bring glory unto men, and without women cannot men be. You know women that say, Men wouldn't be here without me. Who do you know says that? Now, mind you, motherhood and growing a human being. Yes, that takes a lot of strength. There's a lot of things that go into it. 
just health wise alone. I get it, but when I'm talking about the modern women, they use that as a power trip. But that's what you're supposed to be doing. If you're using wisdom, especially if you have a husband that is supplying to you correctively, like just righteously speaking, if you have a husband that is doing what God ordains a husband to be, then yes, that is in, that is in your job description to bear children. But the fact that nowadays women take it upon themselves just to make themselves just higher than all get out because men are born from them. And it's just like y'all need to humble yourselves and calm down because just like y'all, the men that you bring up is wicked as hell. Call a spade a spade, honey. It is what it is. A spark to my head because I started talking about the women's beauty as well and how you're supposed to bring everything to her still first Edris chapter 4 this is verse 18 yay and if men have gathered together gold and silver or any other goodly thing do they not love a woman which is comely in favor and beauty I need a bitch. Men love a natural woman. Just is what it is. I don't know who the hell told y'all that BBLs is a thing and is supposed to be the beauty standard, but that is not it. Because when you're supposed to be 70, 80 years old, everything going to be flopping down. And that's not going to be cute. But nonetheless, I digress. I'm sorry. You know men that just be gawking at the eyes, aka gate. <laughs> they have their mouths wide open for these females. Mm. You already know. And that again with women is a power move. And back to the just giving everything to the woman. This is verse 22. By this also ye must know that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Do you not <laughs> work for your own independent self, men, okay? You work for yourselves, but then you're getting tricked out from these females and paying their bills also, but you're not even committed to them most of the time. That's just a fact of the times that we are living in now because as scripture, that's not in here, but it does say that women will encompass a man. This is a time where women believe that they are on top because they are making more money nowadays and they're able to be more financially free. But at the same time, a lot of those women are single and normally without kids. Now, mind you, there are some women that have the kids and are still the breadwinners and so forth. And it's just like, even I was in that boat. However, that doesn't negate the fact that you're not supposed to let the man do his job, especially if y'all are together. And if y'all are not together, the fact is men do not have the respect for these females. Okay? They just don't. But that verse right there is just like, don't y'all work so hard and get so puffed up and do all of this stuff just for a woman? Yeah, you do. Sorry to tell you, but you do. Okay? Now, verse 25, it says, Wherefore a man loveth his wife better than father or mother. Yes, there is a point in time where you are supposed to cleave on to another and you're supposed to leave your father's home to be married. Yes, that is a cultural custom. I'm speaking as the part of there is scripture that says, do not love anybody more than you love God. That includes your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, cousins and them, folk and them, and your husband. And even your children. <gasps> Controversy, yes, you can love them to bits and pieces, but
but you are supposed to love God with all of you. Period. That's the beginning of all. Okay? Nothing is to happen. But anyway, then it continues to say, Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women and become servants for their sakes. You men will do anything, grovel, complain, come up with convoluted themes, come up with plans to lie, come up with all of these things in the sake to keep a woman in your life, aka you're mad, thirsty. There's a difference between being thirsty and reconciling with somebody. Reconciling is maybe you guys have separated for a while and then you came into the mutual understanding that you want each other back. You're going to try because honestly, y'all can't separate from each other anyway. But being thirsty is you're literally plotting on this female because you just, you can't see her with nobody else, but you're not doing what you need to be doing as a husband is what it is here we go as it ends with the topic verse 27 many also have perished have erred or erred and sinned for women so letting these women trip you up into sin because that's exactly what they are naturally just built to do in most cases because they don't know the word you know they're not pushed to know god's law statutes and commandments they're not taught to be accountable for past wrongdoing and correcting themselves and repenting to no longer do it again and to do it no more that's the hiccup so naturally verse 27 happens you may not fully get the scope of it or fully understand it, but this is where the toxicity comes from. Nothing new under the sun, fam. Nothing. This happens with women to this day. And you got to watch out for it because why would you want to be in sin because of a woman? Because as a woman, I don't want to be in sin because of a man. Oh, no. Mm -mm. And correction is love. So say that scripture says that's popping up in my head now. It's about the righteous man with a woman, pretty much just a wicked woman. There's several scriptures that align with that notion. It's that scripture says, a wicked man is allotted pretty much a wicked woman and vice versa. A righteous man will have a righteous woman. And for those that in between and one that does believe and the other that doesn't believe, y'all are seeing the scriptures on the screen already. This is not, I'm, I'm not pump faking for nothing. There is literally things that people are doing right now there are people that are trying to force their spirituality on their spouse or significant other and they're just refusing now there's a difference between having and lending an ear and trying to open your heart to corrective righteousness in the book of god nothing else now with this not with the whole denominations and all no true wisdom knowledge and understanding if y'all are trying to do that together forge on if one of you is trying to do it and has gotten the light within you and the other spouse isn't understanding it initially it's a hard road okay let me explain my situation <laughs> i'm speaking from experience because i was the female that wasn't getting it in the beginning okay i was not trying to listen to it the man knows about god and reading the scriptures and so forth 
what happened was we started developing together the wisdom, knowledge, truth, understanding. It was through him that let me have the time with his patients and so forth. Let me develop into who I am becoming today. I can't thank God more for it because previously in my life, I would not be able to understand a word in this thing, even the half. I'd be like, what is a half? You know what I mean? There is no way that I would be able to understand any of this with the studious journey that I have been on for the past five years. I have gained the keys in which it takes to decipher this. And even though I'm just speaking on certain key components now and stories and stuff like that, I always want to remember that I still am a student because there's a lot of scriptures that I may not have seen in the past that may pop up now. And that's a lifelong thing, especially when you're in this word. That's going to happen always because the Bible, in addition to the other holy books, are living words. So, I just wanted to say that as a caveat. But let me continue. And you know these dudes too that just be yes men. They laugh when you laugh. And your jokes ain't even funny, sis. And most times they're not funny, okay? Maybe you are funny, but probably to a man, you, you're you not. They just doing that to make you feel better, okay? In most cases, in most cases, I'm talking about the people that just playing the game and they trying to win. Verse 29, and it says, Yet did I see him in a palm, the king's concubine? the daughter of the admirable Barticus, sitting at the right hand of the king and taking the crown from the king's head and setting it upon her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. Not, first off, she a concubine. Second off, she took the crown and put it on her head. Thirdly, she smacked him up. Hmm. Was there any accountability? Let's see. And yet, for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. You, yeah, that look. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain that she might be reconciled to him again. I don't see no accountability there. Continuing. O oh, ye men, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? Then the king and the princes looked upon another. So he began to speak of the truth. Because mind you, the first part of the wise statement was women are strong. And the following was of the truth. So here's the truth. <laughs> Wine is wicked. This is verse 37. Wine is wicked. The king is wicked. Women are wicked. All the children of men are wicked. And such are all their wicked works, and there is no truth in them. In their unrighteousness also they shall perish. Keep trying if you want to. I'm just putting it out there. As for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth forevermore. Once you get certain truth and understanding and you commit to it and you understand it and you give your life to Christ and God. Give your life. What the things that are revealed to you. 
is one of the most beautiful things just personally that I could say that I have experienced. Verse 39, with her, there is no accepting of persons or rewards, but she doeth the things that are just and refraineth from all unjust and wicked things and all men do well like of her works. You see how it's switched on how people would think it was a switch and people could get confused there because initially it's talking about how normally what women do or what they're there for or what may have you and what they may say. And then it switches to saying the truth is a her. Now, if you understand the pillars of wisdom and so forth, wisdom and things of the nature have a feminine quality. They are mentioned as her. It was a double statement where the women are the strongest, but above all things, truth beareth away the victory. Yes, it was talking about the attributes of certain women, but then it was also talking about truth in a feminine connotation. So don't get that confused thinking that it's still talking about a literal woman. That is just talking about the term of truth. And to finish that statement off, I'll say this. Verse 40. Neither in her judgment is any unrighteousness, and she is the strength, kingdom, power, and majesty of all ages. Blessed be the God of truth. And who is the God of truth? The God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one who sent down his only begotten son, the Messiah, Christ. To not only still implement the law, statutes, and commandments, but to also introduce faith and grace unto his people. And rise on the third day and continue the work alongside with the Holy Spirit and the angels in the spiritual realm and the angels of righteousness. I'm not even worried about the angels of sin because they cast them lots every day on our people. We casting them back. It's okay. You good because we're going to cast them back. Trust. <laughs> yeah, it's a fight, honey. It is a fight. I know I keep saying I'm going to end it on this note, but truly, this is this what I'm going to end it with, okay? With the whole truth situation, blah, blah, blah. Verse 60, and it says, Blessed art thou who has given me wisdom, for to thee I give thanks, O Lord of our fathers. Thank the Lord that when you read these words, that you understand it. Blessed are you that are able to take the precepts out of it and apply it to what you see or what you have even previously have gone through in your life before coming into this knowledge, truth, and understanding. To be able to be like, wow, this really how it was. I was really in I was really like this in the world. And now having a new lens, you can see further how you were sucked out of that and how you were chosen to be able to correct yourself because there are people that are just going to remain stuck and it's unfortunate as the parable in which I will include on the screen. There are categories of people, and I have told this in a few videos actually, but I think it's important to bring back up the understanding of these categorizations because there is a group that will have this knowledge, truth, and understanding and live it throughout the rest of their days and hopes that they can get to the kingdom. There are others that may 
you know, they, they on fire and they gonna get it now. But then they start to fall on the wayside. And there's some that will just not hear. Reprobate. It's just the truth. And if it wasn't, it wouldn't be written. So if you are able to understand anything that I said, because sometimes it could be like feeling like I'm talking gibberish to people because they just don't want to listen to reason. Take it from a person that went through this and thought this way. I'm not afraid to say I did. The important matter of the fact is women like myself are striving every day and correcting themselves every day purging themselves out every day because I do not want to be the woman that caused the man to sin. I don't want to be the woman that causes the man to fall. I don't want to be the reason that society crumbles because women have in this book shown as examples as to them doing that. I don't want to. I don't want to be part of that. Oh, Lord, I don't want to be a part of that. So we're going to end it off here. This is referring to some of the chapters just in the beginning of First Edris in the Apocrypha. Now, mind you, before I go, let me explain this. The Apocrypha are additional books that were not canonized initially in the Bible. Now, mind you, if you do get the 1611 version of the King James Bible, these books will be included in there. However, since I have the NKJV, I needed to supplement the scriptures with getting this as well. And I completely got stuck off first edges and I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta share this because it, it, it sparked it. <laughs> so... <laughs> I hope you enjoyed and until the next one, take care.